Hello friends, and welcome to Hollow Mead. My name is Nina, I make mead, and I'm a good witch, not a bad witch. I'm a good witch, not a bad witch. <laughs> so today we're firing up the cauldron and we're toasting some honey that we're going to blend with crisp apple cider to make ourselves a caramel apple mead. Let's talk about what a sizer is. Let's talk about what a boche is. John is indisposed right now, so to tell the history- Hi, of... yes, I am about to tell you what a boche is. Yes, hi. <laughs> Have you ever tried to film a video with uh, uh, your coven? <laughs> no, I'm behaving. I have not moved. I just wanted more mead. Hi, John here. Real quickly, I'm going to tell you what kinds of mead a sizer and boche are. Because unfortunately, Nina's footage gets a little lost in translation. A sizer is a mead made with apples, and a boche is a type of mead that has you caramelize the honey, creating a marshmallow, toffee, caramel flavor. So we decided to combine the two styles of mead and try to get that flavor of a caramel apple. All right, back to the intro. I'm finally getting to the witch part of spooky season. Finally, we've talked about Dionysus, Oktoberfest. <laughs> We're getting now into witches. <laughs> this is the story of the first women in Paris to be tried and executed for witchcraft. The year was 1390. Their names were Margot and Marion, and they were accused of casting spells on Marion's former lover and his wife. Margot provided a recipe to Marion of red wine and menstrual blood to provoke impotence, which she drank with her lover's wife. Margot also supplied a second recipe to Marion. This recipe was intended to arouse desire for Marion, and it involved roasting the testicles of a white rooster, grinding them into powder, and putting them into the wife's pillow for nine days before mixing it into her lover's food and wine. But I'm the rooster! <laughs> no one's gonna hurt you, John. It's okay. <laughs> no one's gonna take your testicles. But that's not what we're making today, I promise. Oh my god. <laughs> Imagine. No! No, I will not imagine. <laughs> I mentioned Margot and Marion because three years later, we get our first documented Boucher recipe, also from Paris. It appears in a book called Le Menagier de Paris, or the Parisian Household Book. Here is that recipe. So here's what we did instead of those two horrible recipes. <laughs> we used a crystallized wildflower honey. When you get into mead making, you tend to have a lot of leftover honey just lying around, crystallizing. So if we're gonna have to melt it anyway, we might as well really melt it. Yeah, one five pounder and our eight pounds of leftover crystallized honey will be all right. We built a fire outside and we had that honey going for three hours, low and slow. This is very important. Use a big pot while caramelizing honey as it will expand and potentially overflow. The cider we used came from a local farm stand down the road. We made sure that it was free of preservatives so that it would actually ferment. You'll also notice that we were skimming off the foam that was created during the caramelizing process. We just threw it on the ground, but in the medieval Boucher recipe, they actually have a use for it. They call it scum, and they suggest that you can make a Boucher for your servants with it. Um, we're just giving it back to the bees. Another thing, be extremely careful while mixing your molten honey. Because honey has such a high boiling point, if you pour any liquid, either water or cider into it, it will immediately boil it, spattering all over the place. So what we did was to wait a little while and pour the honey into the cider already in a honey bucket. Once we stirred everything completely, we transferred the brew into our carboy. We waited for it to cool and pitched the yeast. Safale 04. The initial gravity came to 1.120. It even looks like a caramel apple. Look at that color. This is a two-week update. The mead has been fermenting under pretty cold conditions. It's at 1.072, making it around 6.5%. Where it is right now is delicious, sweet, a little sparkly. We definitely achieved the caramel apple taste. All right, back to the witches gathering. Oh, I finally figured out what kind of witch I am. I, I, I'm a honey witch. Yes! <laughs> 
So a honey witch needs a stirring stick. In Norse tradition, a stirring stick was passed down from generation to generation because the yeast that lived on the wood of the stick would start fermentation in each new brew, which is very interesting, a little gross, but super cool and a little magical. So I made a stick! It's a lion with bees living in it. Okay, so I didn't carve the stick itself. It's from a homebrew store, but I did make this design. It's based off of a story from the Book of Judges in the Tanakh. When Samson was young, he was confronted by a lion, and without much effort, he tore it apart, thus realizing his supernatural strength. Many years later, as he was getting married, he passed by that same spot where he had killed the lion. He discovered that a swarm of bees had built their hive in the carcass. He took some of the honey, and he ate it. What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? This is my first elaborate wood burning, but I was really happy with this drawing I did, so I knew I had to at least try to put it into wood. So here it is. I make a lot of mead, but I'm definitely very Jewish, so I thought instead of putting runes and other things like that, I would put a little bit of some Jewish magic into my stirring stick. This video is a little different than other videos, but you know what? Things are gonna be, <laughs> things are gonna be a little weird. <laughs> if only you could see what was happening outside of this rectangle right now. <laughs> I love you, bye. <laughs> I need your help. I got honey hand. <laughs> sure. Hello, friends. Smoke effects. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's very good.